Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to talk a little bit about functions and their graphs and in particular we're going to discuss an example involving the graphing of a reciprocal function from uh, an original function. But before we get to that let's uh, motivate the subject a little bit. Why do we want to learn how to graph functions and why is it important? How is it useful? Well graphs can convey virtually complete information about functions in a simple lucid and visual way. So for example you look at the graph of a function and it tells you a lot of information immediately about the function. So in other words graphs are a very powerful tool for understanding functions and their behavior, their properties and so on. In this, uh, in this video we're going to look at graphing reciprocal functions. So let's build our in intuition a little bit and look at the following example. We're asked to sketch the graph of this function here and hence, with that information, sketch the graph of the reciprocal function. So how do we do it? Well the first thing we would like to do is sketch the graph of the original function. Okay, so if you look at the, this function f, it's almost like the square root function. It's just got a plus 3 here. So what we're going to do is sketch the graph of root x and shift the graph of this function 3 units to the left. Okay, if this was an x minus 3 here, we would sketch the graph of this function and shift the graph 3 units to the right. Okay, so let's do this. So we should be able to easily sketch the graph of square root of x. Looks something like this. Okay, so we're going to take this graph and shift it three units to the left. So the shifted graph then will look something a little like this. Okay, so let's look at the properties of this graph here. There's a, a number of interesting and important uh, properties that we're going to use to sketch the graph of the reciprocal function. Firstly, the domain of this function is this part of the axis here. Okay, so let's observe the following. Firstly, the domain of this particular f is this interval here. In other words, all those x values that are greater than or equal to negative 3. The second thing we notice is that f's greater than or equal to 0, and in particular, f's positive for x greater than 3. Okay, another important point here from the graph is that f is strictly increasing. And finally, note that f is 0 at x equals minus 3. Okay, so we've got four important points there. So what we want to do now is take this information and 
apply it to sketching the graph of the reciprocal function. Okay, so let's do that. So from f and its graph, we're going to notice the following. Well, this function will have the same domain as the original function, but we have to exclude the points where f equals 0. So we don't want to divide by 0 here. So we know that this is the domain of f. We know that f has a 0 at x equals minus 3. So we take this interval and exclude the point x equals minus 3. So this is the domain of 1 on f, or the reciprocal function. Secondly, we notice that f's positive for all x greater than minus 3. So this means that 1 on f must also be positive, because 1 divided by a positive thing is positive. Okay. Again, we noticed from the graph of our original function that f was strictly increasing. This means that 1 on f, or the reciprocal function, must be strictly decreasing. And finally, we go back to our fourth point down here. f of minus 3 was 0. Now, to make sure we don't we, we, well, we can't divide by 0 here. So what this means is that x equals minus 3 is a vertical asymptote of the reciprocal function. Alright, so we can use this information now that we've determined from the graph of f to sketch the graph of the reciprocal function. So this is the domain, the reciprocal function's positive and strictly decreasing, and there's a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 3. So let's use that information to sketch our reciprocal function. Oops. So here I'm just drawing in the vertical asymptote, x equals minus 3. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, so the reciprocal function is positive, strictly decreasing, and we have a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 3. Okay, so that's the basic question, but let's, let's look at the bigger picture. What are some important ideas that you can apply to lots of different examples? Well, the reciprocal function has the same domain as f, but you exclude any x points where f of x equals 0. And at those zeros, for example, if f of c equals 0 for some c, the line x equals c is a vertical asymptote of the reciprocal function. So in the previous example, c was minus 3. If f is increasing, then the reciprocal function is decreasing. And similarly, if f is decreasing, then the reciprocal function is increasing. And finally, something about limits. If f has a limit as x approaches some number, then the reciprocal function has a reciprocal limit. Okay, just being careful you don't divide by zero. So let's look at another example. I'll leave this one for you to do. Sketch the graph of this function, and with that information, sketch the graph of this function.